What's going on everybody? It's your favorite Auntie Mo and we are back for another episode review of Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. This is season six, episode nine, Pretty Petty. Hmm. Before we get into the review, if you are one of my returning subscribers, what's going on, baby? How you been? I sure enough appreciate you from the bottom of my goddamn heart. Thank you so much for coming back and seeing your auntie and steady rocking with me. I damn sure appreciate your ass. If you are new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'm your auntie Mo. We are family now. And ain't a damn thing you can do about it unless you hit that unsubscribe and then you can kick rocks with open toe shoes. You know what I'm saying? The name of this episode is Pretty Petty. So I might be a little petty this, this you know what I'm saying? It's a little rock with me though. Lean with me, rock with me. So y'all, this episode was cute. I liked it. It has some funny ass parts to it. Hopefully, you guys will enjoy this review. Trust me, I already know I'm late with it. Let me tell you, look, look, let me tell you, let me, let me, let me tell you something. Y'all already know if y'all done seen my other videos that I have been dealing with these dizzy spells and these migraines like crazy. They've been hard. Yesterday, I wanted to get up under the bed. It was that bad. So when I came home yesterday, I didn't do a dumb thing but take a shower and get my ass in that bed. So, you didn't get no review from me yesterday. I apologize, but I'm gonna give you a two piece and a biscuit with this one, so hopefully you will enjoy this review. I got a little lemonade with a little dash of Ciroc in there. You know how y'all ain't like a little peach Ciroc. Um, so hopefully y'all are ready for the review because I'm ready to give it to you, so let's get right on up into it. All right, y'all, so we just gonna pick this thing up where we left off with it last week. So Ray J and A1 over there at the house, A1 done heard a noise. He both, both him and uh, Ray J go downstairs. Lo and behold, it's Sia ass down there. Lyrica home girl. She claims she there to feed the dog. Now, pause, y'all. That dog look high. I don't care what nobody say. That dog look high to me. Yes, he was a, what was like a, a English, um, was it English pit bull or English? Some kind of, he was a cute ass little dog though. But he looked high, poor damn dog. Eyes was bloodshot red. He probably came right in the house, started smoking and smoking that damn shit with that dog. Man, that polar no dog. But, he like, what you doing here? She said, well, I just came over here to feed the dog. And um, since I'm here, like, um, when did you get back into town? And what have you been up to? First thing he asked is, where's my son? She was like, okay, so that's what you worried about now is where's just, all right, where's Lyrica? No, that should have been the first thing out your dog on mouth. Where's Lyrica and my son? Or where's my family? You know what I'm saying? But she was like, you act like you don't even care nothing about that. Like, she already know. Basically, long story short, because I'm chopped this up because I don't even want to get to this so long. He was, she was like, well, she already know that she done slept with an old girl that she done met on the airplane. He said he ain't do it. Ray J over there flipping his little glasses down. Ray J and them damn glasses. Boy, they about took me out. He says that he wants a chance to apologize and make it up to Lyrica. See, it's like, well, you need to call her. You need to try to get in contact with her. He said she got me blocked on everything. I can't get in contact with her. She's like, well, why don't you call her mama? This nigga gonna say, call her mama. Her mama. You sound crazy right now. Well, no, actually, no, she don't. You ain't got no other way to. And then not only that, you already know. She probably gonna be at her damn mama house. You already know that. So go on over there to the mama house and talk to Big Lyrica G. She, you know she don't like your ass anyway. She probably ain't gonna let you talk to Lyrica. But you know, hey, you gotta work it out and get your family back. This nigga say he gonna file a missing persons report. Boy, you need to file a missing persons report on that damn clothing because you lost your damn mind when you came up with that. Next up, we got the Hollywood Unlocked interview with Jason Lee, Melissa Ford, um, K. Michelle, and I think the dude name was DJ Damage. He was another guest host that was on there, right? First thing they started to get into, K. Michelle, well, no, that was Jason Lee that started it off, actually. Jason Lee was like, we're glad to have Melissa Ford back. You know, April was just keeping your seat warm while you were out. Here go K. Michelle. Yeah, it was pretty boring when you weren't on there. Now, K. Michelle, I love K. Michelle. She's a beautiful, beautiful girl. But, oh, she just got some ugly ways to her. And her number one thing that I don't like about her, she always saying something bad about other black females. Well, just other females in general, but black females, she don't really, like, I, and I love K. Michelle. That's crazy. That's crazy. And I, I still love her. I still support her music. I was listening to Can't Raise a Man. 
twice earlier today on Pandora. That's my goddamn song, Can't Raise a Man. Oh, wait. But she was saying how the show was born since Melissa wasn't on there. April being there made it super boring. And of course, Melissa, you know, Melissa just kind of put her head down. She was like, oh, hell, here they go. I ain't finna get up in the middle of this. Of course, Jason Lee was like, well, we had to let her go because we were losing um, sponsorships and we were losing subscribers or, or followers, something like that, he was saying. So he said he had to let her go. Then they got on the whole subject about April and Monique going on this tour that they wanted to go on. Here go came Michelle. April and Monique going Going on this karaoke extravaganza is a joke to me. I don't think neither one of them can do it. Like, hey, Michelle, yes, this is, you had to fight, you had to struggle, you had to hustle and survive to get to where you are right now. And quite honestly, in my opinion, I feel like K. Michelle should be a lot higher in her career than what she is. I feel like she, she should be up there with the, Alicia Keys, the Mariah Carey's, the Beyonce. Yes, I did, doggone say it, because K. Michelle can sing her ass off. Fight me if you don't think she can. You can't deny the fact the girl can sing her ass off. She needs to be up there with the Fantasias and the J. Huds. Yes, I said it. The K. Lani's and all of that. She can do that. But I feel like, you know, her, her, her mouth has kept her back a lot of times from getting a lot of things that she could have gotten. And I say that because right hand to God, I know. Over my 39 years of life, I've learned that I have had to humble myself and I've had to watch my mouth because I have lost out on a lot of things because of this right here. K. Michelle should be way further in her career than where she is right now. But again, she ain't scared to go toe to toe, 10 toes down with a bitch over any doggone thing. She says it's a joke. Jason Lee ain't doing nothing but even being even more petty. Um, so would you let them open up for you? She like, hell to the now. Would you let them go on tour with you? Hell to the now. Would you let them hold your bags? Oh, hell no. But this is the thing. She supposed to be friends with Monice. Why would you be on there bashing your homegirl like that? It's one thing with her in April, cause she kind of made this little sly remark like, you know, I, the dude I'm with, and me and him start messing around, so all of a sudden I want to be a singer. She's referring to April when she says that. When it comes to Monique, like Monique's supposed to be your homegirl. I wouldn't do that. That's just me though. I wouldn't get on the radio for the world to hear on top of that, me bashing somebody that I consider to be a friend. Knowing that Monice was there, or at least I seen on last season, Monice was there, she went to visit you when you wouldn't have your surgery and all of that, and you even appreciate or you thanked her for being there when you needed her. So I'm just saying, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't, I don't get that one right there. Then it starts to get on the whole subject about K. Michelle want to be a country music singer. Jason Lee brought up when she went into that, um, uh, what was that, the country bar, that country, whatever that was, when she got up on stage, I don't know if y'all seen that, but y'all can dog on share, put that in, um, in the YouTube search, that'll come up. She was saying, like, she went on stage and she snapped at the white country folks. She was like, I can sing better than any white woman up in here when I say I'm going to be the next Taylor Swift. Damn it, that's what I mean. And she just went off, okay? She said her thing was she wanted to go... Because, you know, she says the country music world is all upset about Lil Nas X. Try that's a whole other thing right there. My son loves Can't Nobody Tell Him Nothing when it comes to that goddamn song. My son love the hell out that damn song. But she said a lot of people in the country music world are still upset about Lil Nas X. So she wanted to go to a honky-tonk country heel toe kick slide bar and she wanted to go karaoke night and she wanted to sing so she said when she went up to the dj the dj told her this is not the night we sing a country music tonight and so she started to tell them you know you don't know how i made it through college yodeling and she's a phenomenal singer k michelle can sing her ass off and she wants to be accepted into the country music world as a for real serious you know singer but the thing about it is k michelle girl if black folks ain't really accepting you right now because your mouth and your attitude, how you think the white folks? I'm just saying. I'm just saying, like I said, speaking as a woman that has had to learn how to humble her damn self. How you can't expect? They damn sure ain't gonna have. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. All right, y'all. So it's Fizz, J Bug, A1, Mickey Monday, and um, Booby. 
<laughs> Booby with his foin ass. They meet up, have a little boys play date at the cigar bar or whatever, right? Booby gets to asking them how's everything going on tour. He heard about the whole thing with Raz B because Raz B asked and got arrested. And where was that at? I'm looking at my notes, y'all. I think he got arrested in, in Milwaukee for some old domestic violence stuff. He got into it with his girls. Probably choked her, smacked her around, and did some of her and got arrested. And like Fizz say, over 99.9% .9 of their fan base is all females. So they couldn't have that. So he had to sit it out. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if they all had to sit it out, but I know his ass for sure had to, you know, had to sit down and think about your doggone actions and your consequences and stuff. Try Fizz ass just happy that it ain't him that's caught up in the middle of the drama this doggone time. He around there gloating that it ain't him. But he does say that he got other drama going on, things that's kind of, you know, got his mind to tear. He, had, he said his grandma is um, in the hospital. I'm going to say his grandma in prison. Lord, please don't put Granny in prison. He said his grandma is in the hospital. She is on life support because she had a heart attack. So he's worried about that. He says he wants to go back home so he can be there with his mom. Now, pause. When this dude said his grandma is in the hospital on life support, it's touch. I mean, it's any day now. Here go, booby. Off oh, real. She's straight. Is it critical, critical? Or is it like... This nigga Fizz say, dog, she on life support. Like, life support. Also, it's bad. Booby. I'm just need you to do this through the whole other episodes. Don't talk. Don't talk. Don't talk. Don't talk. J-Boog invites them to come on out to Vegas because it's their last day on the B2K Millennium Tour. A1 says he gonna go, but um, if A1, I mean, if Lyric is there, he don't want to be nowhere around. He said he probably gonna have to sit that one out, but we already know that his ass is gonna go. Then the fool gonna have another to say, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. See, that's the problem with you now. That's why you caught up in a bulk that your ass is caught up in now, because you around here laying it low and spreading it wide. Don't go to Vegas and lose your whole dog on life now. So Zells and Jason meet up with Princess. Princess is getting ready to do a launch party for her new makeup line, Prella. Now she said it was originally supposed to be a nail salon, but her first contractor ran off with her money. She said she, um, the building that she was renting, she was getting ready to lose her lease on it, so she just went ahead and let it go. So she had already had the name Prella trademark, so she decided to turn it into a makeup line. That's smart, girl. Go and get your damn coins. She wants Zell to style her, and she wants Jason to be there to promote the whole thing, right? Now, um... Jason asked her, you know, like, how long has she been doing this for? She said she'd been doing it for a year. And so this was something that she always wanted to do. She wanted to be the face of her own makeup. I think it's like vegan, animal cruelty. I don't know. Some kind of healthy ass dog on makeup, whatever the hell it is. She says she's inviting Monice. She said her and Monice had um, made up. And Zells tells Jason that'll be um, a good time for him and Monice to make up, you know, since so she's going to be there. Oh, no, not him and uh, Monice. April, because uh, Zells asked Monice, I mean, Zells asked Princess if he can invite, um, you know, a friend or whatever. And so he said he was going to invite April. So he told Jason that'll be a good time for you and my girl to make up. You know, whoop de whoop yada, yada, yada. Zell says he is looking for a wife. He says that he wants to have kids and he wants to settle down. Now, of course, we already know um, Zells is part of the LGBTQ community and I'm Honestly, I didn't think he was all the way gay anyway. I thought he was straight, to be honest. I just thought I thought he just liked to fiddle around, you know, here and there. But he seemed straight to me. He just seemed straight, but he just seemed flamboyantly straight. You know what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying. But he says he, wanna have to, uh, he wants to have a wife. He wants to settle down, have kids, and all of that. He'll probably be a funny-ass daddy if he does end up having some doggone kids. But y'all... Zales is wild. <laughs> That's a wild boy. We got this other scene where Mickey Monday is having a barbecue with his family. Um, his mom and dad is there. His little girl is there. His little girl is his freaking doppelganger. The hair, the shape of the face, the eyes, the nose, the lips, more. That is his baby, Murray. That is his baby, Murray. She looked just like his ass. They having a barbecue. Slick is there. Slick Woods. That bitch is bad. If you don't know who Slick Woods is, you obviously don't know who Rihanna Savage, Fente, Savage, okay? That's goddamn Slick Woods. 
Google that shit. That bitch is bad with her young ass. But they over there having a barbecue, little family time. He says that he's stressed out because another deal that he had went, you know, fell through. First, he was with Akon. He said Trisha set him up with somebody else. That didn't go through because the dude was supposed to have been paying his bills. And then the dude ended up ghosting on him. Speaking of ghosted, if y'all ain't already follow my uh, nephew on here, Ty Mizzle, I think his name of his channel is Mizzle14, and he does the reviews for the show on MTV Ghosted. That's why I ain't been doing it, because somebody asked me, was I been gonna do the reviews to Ghosted? I'm not doing it because I'm watching Ty Mizzle. So if you ain't already, go watch Ty Mizzle. Mizzle14 is the name of his channel. He does review to Ghosted. But anyways, he said that his um the last guy was supposed to have been paying his bills and, you know, dipped on him. So now he's back on the grind, stressed out, trying to figure out what he's going to do to support his family. Now, it was just a cute little scene. Slick was just telling him that he needs to get out of his... Uh, it, it, it was a cute little scene. Anyways, moving on to that, because there wasn't a whole lot to it, quite honestly. It was just a cute little family scene or whatever. And then he says that he wants to go to Vegas. He, I, I don't know if, I didn't get that he was saying he couldn't afford to go, but he said he was stressed out. He had a lot on his plate. Like, nigga, what else are you doing? Go to damn Vegas. So it was cute. His daddy said, I'm going to give you my credit card, boy. You can max that sucker out. I'll give you all $5.50 on my card. That was cute. His daddy said, Moniz is at rehearsal. April comes in. April is mad. Moniz is irritated because that's supposed to have been her home, girl. Like I said, because they both talking about the whole K. Michelle interview with Hollywood Unlocked. I don't blame Moniz. Like, you supposed to be my damn home, girl. And you all on the radio talking about me sideways and shit like what the hell, man? What the hell? She should have went to K. Michelle ass a long time. I'm sorry. I went to her ass a long time ago. You don't answer the phone, bitch. I'm going to show up at your door. April says that she's going to back out on doing the tour. She said, I'm not saying like forever, no, but just as of right now, because I just want to focus on myself and focus on my music. Girl, just go ahead and say you ain't got nothing to sing. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Just say you ain't got but one song and that's it. Girl, you can still go and make a few coins off that one dog on song. Ain't nothing wrong with that. So she, Monice asked her, she wants to make sure, I want to make sure that it's not because of what you heard on the radio, K. Michelle saying that this is really something genuine coming from you, your own feelings and not somebody else in your head. She guaranteed that it wasn't nothing that K. Michelle said on the radio. She just trying to focus on herself. Whoop de whoop, your girl child, come on now. Let's keep it 3,000. She don't got but one song to sing. It's a cute, it's a bop. It's a bop. Oh, don't get it twisted. That one song is a bop. It is. But girl, I go. That's just your auntie though. I can't speak for nobody else. Girl, y'all, so we got Ray J, Princess, and their beautiful baby girl, Melody. She is gorgeous. She looks like a little baby doll with the cheeks, the her cheeks like sit like this on her face. She is so beautiful. They going out getting some smoothies, y'all. Because uh, Princess says she want Ray J to be healthy. So she won't get his ass on some kind of dog on die. Ray J swear up and down he look good. I like Thickums Ray J. <laughs> That's just me. I'm a chubby chaser. I like Thickums Ray J. I think he doggone cute. But um, they talking about her lunch party. I mean her lunch party. She's saying she don't want no kind of drama or nothing going on there. So she want him to keep his eye out. He said he's going to be throwing out bitches left and right if they're coming up in there trying to <laughs> trying to smash the party, mess up any doggone thing. Because she said the last time she had an event, which was her baby shower, that's when Lyrica and Brooke got into it. So, we ain't going to have none of this over here. But that was a cute little scene with them. Like I said, that baby girl, I could not stop staring at her child. She is so beautiful. Plus, she's pregnant with another baby right now. I completely forgot that. Girl, go ahead and you some more babies. She want like five kids. Girl, five kids. Five Oh, no. Apple Watts, Britney B. Um, what's that dude name? Mr. Ray and K. Michelle. They go to a country bar, go line dancing. They look like they have the time of their life. It looks so much fun. K. Michelle was out there boot scooting, boogie all around that dog on dance floor. She was cute with it, though. Then um, Apple got a chance to meet K. Michelle for the first time. I thought it was cute the way she went up to her. She's like, it's nice to meet you. I'm such a fan of yours. Like, she was real and genuine with it, y'all. Let me tell you something. I love Apple Watch. I love Apple Watch. She, I don't know if it's her personality, if it's just how raw and real she is. I don't know what it is. I love Apple. I love Apple Watch. She's somebody I can hang out with. She's somebody that, bitch, we can go shoot the shit. We can go ride out on that hole. She seemed like a fun time. And she seemed real. Like, 
you can tell when she's like now when she's in her green screen you can tell she's kind of like reading off a card or whatever but when she's raw like right there in the scene that's her straight hood with it what you talking about <laughs> Because Britney B asked her, like, so, you know, what was this? Um, did she take my advice? She's like, what? What's she talking about? What? With my mama? Oh, yeah. I talked to my mama. Yeah, it is what it is. But then I'm supposed to be going out to Vegas, uh, going to the family reunion at that one place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is what it is. Like, she wasn't trying to be all Hollywood, you know, keeping it together, nothing like that. I like that about Apple Watch, man. Mr. Ray asked K. Michelle, so have you talked to Monice since the whole Hollywood Unlocked interview? K. Michelle going to say she has been calling and texting her, but she ain't got time to entertain it. Did I miss, if, if I missed something in the episode, please drop it down in the comments and let me know. When did they get into it? I don't remember them getting into it. Not for K. Michelle to be as cold hearted as she is like that to this girl. That's supposed to be your home girl. I get if you feel like she can't sing, but why dog her out like that? What is the point of dogging her out like that? That don't make you look better by dogging her out like that. Especially if you are still not at the level that you should have been at. It's back in 10 years ago. Come on now. And one thing kind of to back it up that Apple said when they was out there boot scooting boogie at the at the two-step, Apple said a good thing. It's always black women tearing other black women down. Like we need to be standing together and trying to do this doggone thing. But it's always black women tearing black women down. And that's a perfect example right there. Like this girl, you done talked all this crap about her. She trying to get in contact with you to talk to you to figure out like where the hell is your head at? And you ain't answering the phone for her? You ain't answering her text messages back for what? Y'all, I got this love-hate relationship with K. Michelle. I really do. I love... The, if the bitch come to Austin right now on a tour, I'm buying the tickets. She can sing. I'm sorry. I'm keeping it 150. That don't mean that I can't have no opinion about her and how she dogs other females like, girl... It don't matter if you think she's the worst thing in the world. That's your home, girl. Y'all go somewhere, chill. Be like, hey, girl, look. So, on that there uh, old McDonald you were singing earlier? Yeah. I don't think you hit that E-I. Quite. It was like E-I. You know what I'm saying? And it should have been like E-I, E-I. Oh, he was like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? You could do something like that, but you ain't got to dog her out on the radio like that. That's, that, that's, not, that's, not, that's not what a real homegirl would do. Y'all, so it's the night of the Prella launch. It's going good. Everybody's there. Um, Princess is there. Paris is there. Monice is there. April is there. Paris is trying to be a little bit petty. Like, oh, so what is this? This is a whole reunion. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, Princess tried to tell Paris, what you surprised for? We made up. We good. Y'all the ones that still got a problem with it if y'all still waiting on some drama to pop up. Then Jason Lee comes in. Him and April kind of start getting into it because, of course, she's upset about how he dogged her out on the radio, which he did. But that's Jason Lee. You can't expect nothing less from Jason Lee. Pause for the cause. Am I the only one that feel like Jason Lee looks like he smelled like a lot of cologne? Like, probably some good smelling shit, too. But he one of them thick niggas that look like he smelled like... Some Drake core, cool water, Gucci, something like that. That's what he looked like. He smelled like, 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 but, but a lot of it, not a little bit, like, not a lot of, like, a, walk through the door, walk. That's what he looked like with that damn cologne. The whole basis of April's conversation was, or her argument was that she wanted Jason to keep her name out of her mouth. But girl, you're trying to be famous. So that's just what happened. Either they talking about you or they ain't talking about you at all. I'm just saying. So she gets pissed off. She walks away and she eventually comes back. They make out. They agree to disagree and keep each other's names out of each other's mouth. Him and Monique have a conversation because Monique did not appreciate when you went and exploited her sex tape to the world like that. Like, that's wrong. That was wrong. I'm just saying. But they talked. They made up from that. It was real cute. It was real cool. The rest of the evening just went off without a hitch.
Y'all forgot to mention Ray J. Baby, Ray J had my ass rolling. He was eating the hell out that cupcake. Oh, and I'm trying to stay away from the sweets. That just made me mad seeing that fool eat that cupcake. And it was falling all in his beard. It just looked all succulent. Ray J and that belly was out to play, baby. <laughs> he was like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's lit in here. We got sandwiches. We got hors d'oeuvres. You know what I'm saying? The belly sexy, though. The belly sitting on sexy, though. You go ahead, Ray J. You and your belly. I ain't even bad at you. All right, y'all. Everybody on the party bus, they getting ready to go. It's Mickey Monday, Booby, Britney B, um, Paris, Zales, and Apple Watch. They all on a they on a throwback party bus with like the stripper pole in the middle of it. <laughs> Finna ride on down to Vegas, right? So they on there, they chilling, having a good time. Then Zells brings up to Brittany. He was like, so it's the elephant in the room. It ain't us, it's you, basically. Saying that he wants an apology for what she said about Paris. Now she was like, you've been making your sly comments since I've been here. He was like, you know what, you right. And I apologize, I apologize for that. Now can you apologize for what you said to my friend? Now Brittany, that was the perfect opportunity for you to get somebody to be on your side. All you could have said, even if you didn't mean it, all you could have said was, you know what, you're right. I apologize for what I said, for whatever it was that hurt your feelings. Girl, even if you wanted to be fake with, don't ruin everybody's party and a trip like that because you want to be prideful because she doesn't want to admit that she was being petty and that she didn't mean anything. Yes, you did. You told that girl to go hop in your Uber and drive away, knowing doggone the history that's behind that. Girl, stop it. So they end up getting into it. She starts saying something about Zell's and Paris being a bowling ball in the pen and calling them Mario and Luigi. Like, girl, I'm gonna need you to read school because no, baby, no, 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 no. But here we go, sirens. <laughs> in the ghetto. Y'all saw so the next episode, it's like it's gonna go down on the doggone party bus. Paris hops up and finna attack Brittany B. Apple Watch get in. I don't know. How Apple Watch starts to get into it with Zells and Paris, but child, that's what's coming on the next episode. If I miss anything, please drop down below and let me know, y'all. This lemonade and peach rock. Who? Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And Auntie Mo will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.